Hey everyone, today we're going to be talking about rooftop tents and flexible solar panels. So I spent the winter outfitting my minivan to be a camper that will sleep four people. There's going to be a forthcoming video on that, so be sure to subscribe. But one of the big things I was trying to figure out is how do I mount solar panels to a rooftop tent? And I have a ton of flexible solar panels and my original plan was to mount those to the tent and if you look on YouTube, there's lots of tutorials on how to do that without drilling any holes. But I gotta say, the more videos I watched, the more worried I got. Over and over, these videos mention that these flexible solar panels quickly delaminated or burned up, probably because there's too much heat on the roof and not enough ventilation. So I was really happy when I saw this video that Will put out about this special SIGS panel that's flexible and he threw it on his golf cart and really seemed to like it. And I really liked the idea that it was self-adhesive, bulletproof, and pretty efficient. So could this be the answer to my problems? SIGS panels are made in a very different way than your typical crystalline solar panel. Essentially, there's a number of layers that are deposited onto a medium. And all you really need to know is that it's made of science. And science is a good thing. And essentially the big benefit is it's flexible and it's a lot more robust than your typical flexible solar panel. This rich solar SIGS 80 watt panel goes for $260. And I know what you're thinking, that's a lot of money for an 80 watt panel. And I agree, but let's give it a look. So I reached out to Rich Solar and they did offer to give me one panel for review. I bought a second one because I need two for my project. And when this Rich Solar 6 panel arrived, it was clear that it really is truly bendable. In fact, you can coil it up like this. And so this is very different than your typical crystalline flexible panel. This thing can really be bent around any sort of shape that you might need. Now this thing is pretty long. I would say it's almost as long as my entire outdoor table and it's much narrower than your typical panel. Speaking of which, this is what a 100 watt monocrystalline flexible panel looks like next to this 80 watt SIGS panel. So the SIGS panel is about 67 and a half inches long and about 13.8 inches wide and thickness is micro. We're talking about two millimeters or a tenth of an inch. Pretty amazing stuff. And you can see how much this thing can flex. If I was doing this with a typical monocrystalline flexible panel, you'd be hearing cracking and things would be going horribly wrong. The surface of this is also very interesting. Rather than a series of squares, you can see it's a bunch of rows with the wire coiled in an S. These panels are designed to be permanently mounted to a surface. So the bottom contains this really sticky layer that's like VHB tape and it is incredibly sticky and gooey, especially in the heat. And so you can see it already oozing out the sides here. So you might need to clean up the edges before you stick it down. Connections are made with a pair of high quality MC4 connectors and the junction box is IP67 rated. So this thing is designed to be out in the weather full time, just like a glass panel but it can be mounted to any surface. Spec-wise, this is rated at 80 watts, and the overall weight of this is 3.8 pounds, and the operating voltage is 19.6 volts, which means it's pretty much compatible with most solar generators, and it will put out 4.08 amps. And when I tested this, it really worked exactly to spec. So for voltage, I measured 20.37 open circuit, and 3.98 amps. So that's not bad at all. So measuring right to specs. And so I hooked it up to my EcoFlow River Pro to give it some testing on this pretty sunny day. I had to dodge a few clouds, but I was able to get some data. And I went a little crazy and ended up pulling out a lot of different solar panels for comparison because these numbers in isolation are sort of hard to figure out. I'm just gonna use a few key numbers but if you are interested in a full head-to-head -head video of all these different kinds of solar panels, please do let me know in the comments and be sure to subscribe. 
So keep in mind that A, you never get the full rated output of any solar panel, and B, these are lying flat on the ground, so you're not getting the same amount of energy as if I was angling them to the sun. And that all said, I still got 58 watts peak at noon, which is 73% of its 80 watt rated output. And to compare that, a glass panel, I was getting 83% of rated output. However, these flexible ones, I was only getting 63. So it's no surprise that glass outperformed it. However, the really important data here is that this is 10% more efficient than a typical flexible panel. Where SIG's panels really shine though, is in shading and low light. So if I put this cap on it, I only had a 10% loss. With glass, it was 25, and with a flexible, it was a whopping 46% drop in output. So I think it's best to think of six panels as the tortoise and a glass panel as the hare. These things can produce lots of power throughout the course of the day in a wider range of weather conditions. I was able to get usable power out of this even when it was pretty cloudy out and in early in the morning and late in the day when other panels really weren't giving me much power. I also really appreciate that these panels don't have a fragile crystalline structure. Because it's a bunch of thin layers of material, really a foil on top of a substrate, you can bend it, you can step on it, it can be hit by hail and it's okay. It also does a better job with handling heat and dissipating it. So in my tests, I found that this thing did get hot, but it would run 10 degrees or even 20 degrees cooler than some of the other flexible panels that I had on hand. And my goal here was to take a pair of these for 160 watts and attach it to the top of my rooftop tent. So attaching them in series, I ended up with 42 volts, which worked really well, plugged into the MPPT charge controller on my Goal Zero Yeti 1000. And I was very reliably getting 100 watts or even up to 110 watts so everything was working great. Now I wish I knew at the time that they were gonna be coming out with a larger panel. So they now have a 160 watt panel that is just twice as wide. So if you're thinking about doing this, I would definitely look at getting that panel. It'll just make it a little bit easier to mount. This is my 2020 all wheel drive Chrysler Pacifica. And on the roof, I mounted a Go Fast Camper Superlight rooftop tent. And my plan is to take these two panels and mount them to the top of the tent. And the nice thing is with the self-adhesive, it should be a snap. Now, the first thing that I realized is that in order to mount this, I wanted to have the cables in the front where the hinge is. And in order to do that, that meant that there could be quite a bit of wind blowing on those cables. And so what I wanted to do is basically create this little pocket and Velcro it down in the front just to sort of act as an air dam. So this is the overall plan for the layout on top of the tent. So my first step here was just to mark it all off. So I used painter's tape and then the next thing is I very, very lightly scuffed it up. And my thinking here was that that might help with adhesion and the next step is I sprayed this thing down really well with 91% rubbing alcohol and made sure that the surface was very well prepped. I also used this special 3M primer and I found this while I was researching. I was really concerned with whether or not this adhesive would stick to a porous surface like this fabric. And so after researching around I found this primer, I think it was like $30 for this little tiny eight ounce can. And I think if I were to do this again, I would probably get two, even though it's expensive, because you can see on this sunny day, it's basically evaporating within seconds. And so I had to work incredibly fast here. And I was a little worried that I didn't get enough on the surface. So if I had my druthers, I would have gone over this a second time. But as you can see with that light spot, I actually ran out before I even finished it. And at first I was like, well, hey, that's no problem. That's where the little pocket is going to be. It's not where the panels are attaching. Yeah, but that's exactly where the front end of the panels are. So, you know, at this point I just had to do it. I was gonna hit the road in about two weeks. 
so what you have to do here is you peel off the backing and you very, very, very carefully roll this thing out, trying to get all the air bubbles out. Uh, this is definitely a job for multiple people. I was using both my kids and my wife to help me figure this thing out. Another piece of advice is I put the panels very close to each other. I basically wanted them to be touching. And I realize in retrospect, that's not a great idea because of expansion. So if you are going to use two 80 watt panels, I would leave at least a eighth of an inch or maybe a quarter of an inch between the panels just so that they're not punching up against each other and causing any sort of problems. And I would strongly recommend wearing gloves and having some towels. These things get super hot. I think you saw it was over 120 degrees. You don't want to be touching these with your bare hands. Now I'll say as far as insulation goes though, it doesn't get any simpler than a big sticker. And so this is much easier to apply than dealing with a flexible solar panel and trying to mount it somehow without screws into something like a rooftop tent. So I really do think this is an awesome option if you do want to install it and not deal with all the hassle of fasteners and gooping everything up. And I think overall this is a super clean install. And when I was researching this style of adhesive, a couple things I learned is you want to install it on a really hot day. And once you do install it, you want to put a lot of even weight on it and let it cure for 24 hours. So I basically got a whole pile of everything in my house that was heavy, oat milk, plants, books, you name it, pile it on here and just let it cook away for a while. And here's the finished product. I think the install is super, super clean. I really like the way this came out. And in case you're wondering how I did this little windbreak cable management thing in the front, it's very simple. I just got some heavy duty Velcro and I attached it to the tent with VHB tape. And that basically lets me do cable management. So I have the two cables here connected in series for the panels and then the positive and negative output. And what I then did is just Velcroed this top piece down. We actually sewed the Velcro onto the material and that provides a really clean surface here. It keeps the wind out, it keeps the rain out, it keeps the dirt out. And overall, this worked out very well. And just make sure that the panel is never obscured by this material. So leave it offset a little bit if you can. And that's it. So now that I got everything installed, well, I ran into some bad luck and I want to tell you about it. So about four or five days after installing these, I noticed one of the panels was giving me zero amps. It was just dead. And I looked really closely at it and I saw this tiny white mark. It looked like it had burned out. Maybe that was the cause. This is probably a good time to talk about warranties. So Richler fortunately offers a five year warranty on their SIGS panels, which is pretty amazing. If you compare that to the one year warranty that they and most other manufacturers have on flexible panels. So peace of mind there. So I reached out to Rich Solar. I told them the situation. I sent them a photo. They shipped me a replacement panel, no hassle at all. And when I asked them about this, if this was something that they've seen before, they said they've never run into it. So it could be that I just got one weird manufacturing defect, but I did want to let everyone know that I did run into a problem with it. They did handle it really well, but you know, I did have to peel it off my rooftop tent and reinstall a new one, which is kind of a hassle. After that, we hit the road. We did an amazing cross country trip. We visited tons of states, made it 7,000 miles all the way out to the West Coast and back to New England. And through it, all these panels delivered. We had power the whole time. I never had a single problem with the panels and they actually stayed on the roof, which surprised me a little bit, I gotta say. And I gotta give credit to this little pocket idea. I really think that this kept the vibration of the cables down to a minimum and also protected that leading edge of adhesive from all that wind and dirt and rain. So I would strongly recommend thinking about some sort of windbreak when you do install these. So four months and 7,000 miles later, this is how it looks on my roof. Everything's still there. 
You can see the material that I used for that windbreak pocket has faded a bit, but that's all on me. So what's my bottom line thought on these? Well, overall, I came away very impressed with them. I think for situations where you're mounting to a rooftop tent or your RV, these are way better than your typical flexible solar panels. Yes, they're a little bit more money, but they're much higher quality, they'll last a lot longer, and they're much more resistant to the elements. I just feel like I'm living in the future. We've been having the same solar technology for such a long time with the same limitations. So it's really cool to see new products on the market from Rich Solar that are really pushing things forward. I'm disappointed that I ended up with a defective panel, but at least it failed early. Rich Solar took care of it and there is a warranty to back it. This is a newer technology, so there's bound to be bumps in the road. But I do think for this kind of application, it's far superior to the other options out there. Speaking of which, if you're interested in a more in-depth comparison of different solar panel types, please let me know in the comments. If I get enough interest, I'll make a separate video for that. And look forward to an in-depth build video for my minivan camper that'll be coming out soon. So please do subscribe so you can get the updates. Thanks for watching everyone. Till next time.